Hi everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me again to talk about ways in which we can decolonize the nursing profession. What I'll be talking about today is advocating for systemic change. So in order to decolonize the nursing profession, we must advocate for systemic change. There's really no way around it. Decolonizing the profession involves challenging and changing the systemic structures and policies that have perpetuated colonialism in the first place. And this includes advocating for policies and practices that promote health equity and social justice and addressing the structural factors that contribute to health disparities. So all nurses, as we know, are ethically obligated to, quote, collaborate in altering systemic structures that have a negative influence on individual and community health, end quote. That's from the ANA. Further, in the nurse's role and responsibility in dismantling racism in nursing, again from the ANA in a position statement, we advocated for developing policies and resources to enhance the recruitment and retention of Black and Indigenous Latinx people of color faculty and establish collaborative mentorship programs to support their career and advancement. I recently spoke with a longtime friend and a mentor who told me that at her organization, there was a Black nurse who was leading the charge to create a mentorship model for their hospital. And that was something that was truly inspirational to me. Her name is Laverne Sharp. And I'm just truly excited about the work that's already happening out there, impromptu, and regardless of the challenges, right, the systemic challenges. So nurses in formal leadership roles should openly challenge these racist practices. That means the CNOs, the executives, the deans, the folks who are there who have the power to do so as they are in those positions that are unique and privileged to be able to sp speak truth to power on behalf of the nurses who may not have as much authority to do so. The ANA recommends that nurses in formal leadership roles be an example in identifying and resolving enculturated white supremacist leadership practices that do harm our profession, that they explicitly denounce and resist institutionally built racist structures and processes that are created through policies, through budgets, or practices that ultimately result in disparate care provision and cause irreparable harm to support specific intentional workplace training and reflecting on racism, having conversations about racism, ra racism and responding to racist practices for all employees. And this is my unique specialty, is creating and nurturing those kinds of environments in which we can have the conversations. And it's really important for us to realize that at the end of the day, all of these are part of how we decolonize. How do we restructure and reframe some of the metrics that we put in place to judge how we would be successful, right? And acknowledging and understanding that it comes all the way through. It shows up through our policies, through our budget, through our practices, through our strategic initiatives, right? So it's not enough to just say that you have a DEI officer or even that you have a statement that acknowledges that you're an anti-racist organization, you have to actually begin the work of systemic change so that you can make it so. And I applaud all of the organizations that are out there doing this work. If you are doing this work, I wanna applaud you. I wanna shout you out. And so please tell me if you're already doing this work, tell me the ways in which you're doing this work. Are you using holistic admissions processes? Are you really making sure you're developing those mentorship programs? Are you creating a leadership pipeline for people of color and other marginalized communities? Share with me what kinds of ways that you are working working on creating systemic changes. Thank you so much for taking the time and I look forward to chatting with you again soon.